There's there's three, four things I'd like to cover as we move forward right now. I want to talk more about the opposition in Venezuela and what you think people outside Venezuela can do to aid the opposition. I want to talk about the ordinary life of the typical Venezuelan now. I want to talk about where that trillion dollars went. And maybe we can do that while talking about your claim, for example, that the Maduro government has basically also become a narco dictatorship. Now, you know, you made a variety of extremely serious allegations, the misuse of a trillion dollars certainly being one of them. But then you also said, well, the Maduro government is in bed with with the narco cartels. And see, I don't think people in North America exactly understand what that means or exactly how nefarious those cartels are and what a danger they pose, well, to the stability of the entire Western Hemisphere. But then you also added to that the fact that Maduro is in cahoots with, well, Cuba, Iran, Russia, and then Hezbollah. And so this is a lot for people to digest because it sounds like a stew generated by a conspiracy theorist in a sense, right? Because there's almost nothing that is bad that you're not accusing the Maduro government of participating in. And so the easiest thing for a listener to do is to just say no to all that. So we should walk through those issues one by one. I guess the thing I'm most curious about to begin with, let's do it in this order. What the hell happened to a trillion dollars? That's an awful lot of money. Where yeah. where do you think <laughs> most of that, especially given that you have a 70% collapse in GDP and an 80% reduction in oil production, it's like, and then everybody in Venezuela is poor, and yet a trillion dollars came pouring in. So what's your sense of who that money went to and like, what sort of people did that money go to and what are they doing with that money? So part of the money funded some very existentialist social programs at some point during the Chavez administration. Uh, but a large part of it went to fund revolutionary groups and political parties all over Latin America. We have to remember that the Castro vision, which is the important figure, I think, here, the Castro vision was to spread the revolution all over Latin America in, in his worldview. What he was doing, believe it or not, is Chris, Christ's work on, on earth. Like he was bringing paradise to earth. He said that literally many times. So Castro had been educated by the Jesuits in Cuba. And he believed that capitalism and, you know, liberal democracy, individualism were the sources of corruption, that Christ was the first communist revolutionary. And this is, by the way, something very similar to what Pope Francis said at some point when he argued that it was the communist who thought like the Christians. He said that, literally. Pope Francis, who is a Jesuit himself. So, and, and Castro was promising to create this, but this had to be ex an expansionist project. So when Chavez came to power and he had all of these resources in, her, in his pockets, plenty of them went to Cuba, of course, to sustain the island, but then he started supporting different regimes or movements and terrorist organizations all over Latin America. At some point, I had this conversa conversation with former President Alvaro Uribe, who is also a good friend. At some point, he told me I was the only non-leftist, non-socialist president in most of South America. A and it's true. And all of these regimes, even the, the Kirchner dynasty in, dynasty in Argentina, the corrupt Kirchner dynasty, got some, you know, loans, special loans from the Venezuelan government when they needed money. So, and they stole a lot of money. I mean, they have, the Chavistas and their families have billions of dollars in, 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 on bank accounts in, in Europe, in the US, in different parts. And, and so it's amazing. You saw Ferraris in, in Caracas while people were starving. You have all, eight, almost 8 million people have left Venezuela because you don't find things to eat. 8 million is a quarter of the population who have left, left the country because of the desperate situation. And you have over 80% poverty rate. And, and so a large part of the money, as I said, went to fund all of these movements. But also within Venezuela, they started creating a parallel army, the Circulos Bolivarian. Chavez very early on understood, probably because Castro advised him to do so, that he needed a parallel troops in order to contain any threat that could come from the, within the army. And he was right. In 2002, the army staged a coup against Chavez. And Chavez was taken into custody. He was imprisoned. But then some generals, you know, regretted the decision of getting rid of him and they reinstalled Chavez. 
And then he, of course, used the, the muscle of the uh, intelligence services of Cuba to, to purge the military as much as he could. But he was never entirely sure that there would not be traitors within the army. So he created the Circulos Bolivarianos, which are armed. And these are the guys, by the way, that you see nowadays in the videos, in the videos attacking Venezuelans from the opposition who are just protesting on the streets and they are shooting at them, they are taking them in and torturing them. Most of the people doing the dirty job are these Circulos Bolivarianos, which is the Bolivarian circles, you know? And so that's a lot of money that went there also. And you know, you can squander wealth with no end. I mean, it's, it's, if, you are, if you are supporting other countries and, and you, you want to install regimes all over Latin America that are favorable to, favorable to you, I mean, a trillion dollars is not even a lot of money. You know, but the, the, the worst part, and I finished the point with this, is that we saw people all over the West in the 2000s when it was already clear that Chavez was a dictator, that he, he was completely undermining the separation of powers. He was imprisoning op the opposition and he was violating human rights and so on. We saw very famous people like Joseph Stiglitz, for instance, coming to Venezuela and praising Chavez for what he was doing. And he did the same, by the way, with Kirchner's, with Fidel Castro. He has been a long time supporter of the Castro dictatorship. And he now writes books called The Road to Freedom and, and, and pretend, pretends to be the savior of, of the West or, or the killer or the undertaker of neoliberalism or something like that. But you could read the New York Times, you could read different BBC, you could see different news media outlets or, or, or even on television. They were sympathetic to Chavez when he started doing this. And it was already clear where they was going. So I, I, I share the frustration of the Venezuelan friends in their assistance because the West has not shown, you know, one standard for everyone. When, it, when it's the leftist, they, they, they support them or they turn a blind eye to what they do. Okay, so let's talk about, let's move from that. So you accounted for a fair bit of the spending. A lot of it has dif disappeared into the pockets of corrupt politicians. You see exactly the same thing, for example, with the Palestinian leadership. All of those people end up with billions of dollars in their accounts. And so that's appalling beyond comprehension. They sacrifice their own people and they often live elsewhere. And so the socialist redistribution of wealth ends up meaning that everyone's much more poor than they used to be, except the small minority of people who have power instead of the evil capitalists, and they have untold wealth at their fingertips. And then you also said the money was distributed around South America and Central America to destabilize and to promote revolution and, and maybe elsewhere in the world as well. Okay, so, so and that you can spend an awful lot of money doing that and cause an awful lot of trouble. And you also pointed out that that's been aided and abetted by the what would you call them, useful idiots of the Western media. And so we'll, we'll get back to that. 